Part Two of Antigone by Sophocles, translated by Francis Store. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Part Two. Thy son has gone, my liege, in angry haste. Fell is the wrath of youth beneath a smart. Let him go vent his fury like a fiend. These sisters twain he shall not save from death. Surely thou meanst not to slay them both. I stand corrected. Only her who touched the body. And what death is she to die? She shall be taken to some desert place by man untrod, and in a rock-hewn cave, with food no more than to avoid the taint that homicide might bring on all the state, buried alive. There let her call in aid the king of death, the one god she reveres, or learn too late a lesson learnt at last, tis labour lost to reverence the dead. Love resistless in fight, all yield at the glance of thine eye. Love who pillowed all night on a maiden's cheek dost lie over the upland holes. Shall mortals not yield to thee? Mad are thy subjects all, and even the wisest heart straight to folly will fall at the touch of thy poisoned dart thou didst kindle the strife this feud of kinsman with kin by the eyes of her winsome wife and the yearning her heart to win for as her consort still enthroned with justice above thou bendest man to thy will o all invincible love lo i myself am borne aside from justice as I view this bride. O oh, sight and eye in tears to drown, Antigone, so young, so fair, Thus hurry down, death's bower with the dead to share. Friends, countrymen, my last farewell I make, My journey's done, one last, fond, lingering, Longing look I take at the bright sun. For death, who puts to sleep both young and old, Hails my young life, and beckons me to Acheron's dark fold, An unwed wife. No youths have sung the marriage-song for me, My bridal bread, no maids have strewn with flowers from the lea, Tis death I wed. But bethink thee, thou art sped, Great and glorious to the dead, Thou the sword's edge hast not tasted, no disease thy frame hath wasted freely thou alone shalt go living to the dead below nay but the piteous tale i've heard men tell of tantalus doomed child chained upon syphilis high rocky fell that clung like ivy wild drenched by the pelting rain and whirling snow left there to pine while on her frozen breast the tears i flow her fate is mine. She was sprung of gods divine, mortals we of mortal line, like renown with gods to gain, recompenses all thy pain. Take this solace to thy tomb, hers in life and death thy doom. Alack, alack, ye mock me. Is it meet thus to insult me living to my face? Cease, by our country's altars I entreat, ye lordly rulers of a lordly race. O fount of Dursi, wood-embowered plain, where Theban chariots to victory speed, mark ye the cruel laws that now have wrought my bane, the friends who show no pity in my need. Was ever fate like mine, O monstrous doom, within a rock-built prison sepulchred, to fade and wither in a living tomb, and alien midst the living and the dead. In thy boldness over rash, madly thou thy foot didst dash, gainst thy justice altar stair, thou a father's guild dost bear. At this thou touchest my most poignant pain, my ill-starred father's piteous disgrace, the taint of blood, the hereditary stain that clings to all of Labdicus' famed race. Woe worth the monstrous marriage-bed where lay a mother with the son her womb had borne. Therein I was conceived, 
Woe worth the day, fruit of incestuous sheets, a maid forlorn! And now I pass, accursed and unwed, to meet them as an alien there below. And thee, O oh brother, in marriage ill bestead, t'was thy dead hand that dealt me this death blow. Religion has her chains, tis true. Let right be paid when rights are due. Yet is it ill to disobey the power so hold by might the sway. Thou hast withstood authority. A self-willed rebel thou must die. Unwept, unwed, unfriended, hence I go. No longer may I see the day's bright eye, Not one friend left to share my bitter woe, And o'er my ashes heave one passing sigh. If wail and lamentation aught availed to stave off death, I trow they'd never end. Away with her, and having walled her up in a rock-vaulted tomb as I ordained, Leave her alone, at liberty to die, or if she choose to live in solitude, The tomb her dwelling. We, in either case, are guiltless as concerns this maiden's blood, Only on earth no lodging shall she find. O oh, grave, O oh, bridal bower, O oh, prison-house hewn from the rock, my everlasting home, Whither I go to join the mighty host of kinsfolk, Persephus's guests long dead, The last of all, of all more miserable, I pass, my destined span of years cut short, and yet good hope is mine that I shall find a welcome from my sire, a welcome too from thee, my mother, and my brother dear. From with these hands I laved and decked your limbs in death, and poured libations on your grave. And last, my Polynices, unto thee I paid due rites, and this my recompense. Yet am I justified in wisdom's eyes. For even had it been some child of mine, or a husband mouldering in death's decay, I had not wrought this deed despite the state. What is the law I call an aid? Tis thus, I argue. Had it been a husband dead, I might have wed another, and have borne another child to take the dead child's place. But now my sire and mother both are dead, no second brother can be born for me. Thus. By the law of conscience I was led to honour thee, dear brother, and was judged by Creon guilty of an heinous crime. And now he drags me like a criminal, a bride unwed, immersed of marriage song and marriage bed and joys of motherhood, by friends deserted to a living grave. What ordinance of heaven have I transgressed? Hereafter can I look to any god for succour, call on any man for help? Alas, my piety is impious deemed. Well, if such justice is approved of heaven, I shall be taught by suffering my sin. But if the sin is theirs, oh, may they suffer no worse ills than the wrongs they do to me. The same ungovernable will drives like a gale the maiden still. Therefore my guards who let her stay shall smart full sore for their delay. Ah, oh, woe is me! This word I hear brings death most near. I have no comfort. What he saith portends no other thing than death. My fatherland, city of Thebes divine, ye gods of Thebes whence sprang my line, look, puissant lords of Thebes, on me, the last of all your royal house ye see, martyred by men of sin, undone. Such meed my piety hath won. Exit Antigone. Like to thee, that maiden bright, Danae in her brass bound tower, once exchanged the glad sunlight for a cell her bridal bower. And yet she sprang of royal line, my child like thine, and nursed the seed by her conceived of Seb's descending in a golden shower. Strange are the ways of fate, her power nor wealth, nor arms withstand, nor tower, nor brass proud ships that breast the sea from fate can flee. Thus Dryas' child, the rash Edonian king, for words of high disdain, did Bacchus to a rocky dungeon bring, to cool the madness of a fevered brain. His frenzy passed, he learnt at last, 
twas madness gibes against a god to fling for once he fain had quenched the menad's fire and of the tuneful nine provoked the ire by the iron rocks that guard the double main on the sporous lone strand where stretcheth salmidesov's plain in the wild thracian land there on his borders are as witnessed the vengeance by a jealous step maintain the gall that trickled from a spindle red the sightless orbits of her stepson's twain wasting away they mourn their piteous doom the blasted issue of their mother's womb but she her lineage could trace to great erechtheus race daughter of boreas in her sire's vast caves reared where the tempest raves swift as his horses over the hills she sped a child of gods yet she my child like thee by destiny that knows no death nor age she too was vanquished enter tiresias and boy princes of thebes two wayfarers as one having betwixt us eyes for one we are here the blind man cannot move without a guide what tidings old tiresias i will tell thee and when thou hearest thou must heed the seer thus far i ne'er have disobeyed thy reed so hast thou steered the ship of state aright i know it and i gladly own my debt bethink thee that thou treadest once again the razor edge of peril what is this thy words inspire a dread presentiment the divination of my arts shall tell sitting upon my throne of augury as is my wont where every fowl of heaven find harbourage upon mine ears was born a jargon strange of twitterings hoots and screams so knew i that each bird at the other tear with bloody talons for the whir of wings could signify naught else perturbed in soul i straight essayed the sacrifice by fire on blazing altars but the god of fire came not in flame and from the thigh bones dripped and sputtered in the ashes a foul ooze gall bladders cracked and spurted up the fat melted and fell and left the thigh bones bare such are the signs taught by this lad i read as i guide others so the boy guides me the frustrate signs of oracles grown dumb o oh, king thy wilful temper ails the state for all our shrines and altars are profaned by what has filled the moor of dogs and crows the flesh of oedipus unburied son therefore the angry gods abominate our litanies and our burnt offerings therefore no birds trill out a happy note gorged with the carnival of human gore oh ponder this my son to err is common to all men but the man who having erred hugs not his errors but repents and seeks the cure is not a wastrel nor unwise no fool the sore goes like the obstinate fool let death disarm thy vengeance oh forbear to vex the dead what glory wilt thou win by slaying twice the slain i mean thee well counsels most welcome if i promise gain old man ye all let fly at me your shafts like archers at a target yea ye set your soothsayer on me peddlers are ye all and i the merchandise ye buy and sell go to and make your profit where ye will silver of sardis change for gold of ind ye will not purchase this man's burial 
not though the winged ministers of zeus should bear him in their talons to his throne not e'en in awe of prodigy so dire would i permit his burial for i know no human soilure can assail the gods this too i know tiresias dires the fall of craft and cunning when it tries to gloss foul treachery with fair words for filthy gain alas doth any know and lay to heart is this the prelude to some hackneyed saw how far good counsel is the best of goods true as unwisdom is the worst of ills thou art infected with that ill thyself i will not bandy insults with thee seer and yet thou sayest my prophecies are frauds prophets are all a money-getting tribe and kings are all a lucre-loving race dost know at whom thou glancest me thy lord lord of the state and saviour thanks to me skilled prophet art thou but to wrong inclined take heed thou wilt provoke me to reveal the mystery deep hidden in my breast say on but see it be not said for gain such thou methinks till now hast judged my words be sure thou wilt not traffic on my wits know then for sure the coursers of the sun not many times shall run their race before thou shalt have given the fruit of thine own loins in quittance of thy murder life for life for that thou hast entombed a living soul and sent below a denizen of earth and wronged the nether gods by leaving here a corpse unlaved unwept unsepulchred herein thou hast no part nor in the gods in heaven and thou usurp'st a power not thine for this the avenging spirits of heaven and hell who dog the steps of sin are on thy trail what these have suffered thou shalt suffer too and now consider whether bought by gold i prophesy for yet a little while and sound of lamentation shall be heard of men and women through thy desolate halls and all thy neighbour states are leagues to avenge their mangled warriors who have found a grave i the moor of wolf or hound or winged bird that flying homewards taints their city's air these are the shafts that like a bowman i provoked to anger loosen at thy breast unerring and their smart thou shalt not shun oh boy lead me home that he may vent his spleen on younger men and learn to curb his tongue with gentler manners than his present mood <sighs> exit tiresias my liege that man hath gone foretelling woe and o oh, believe me since these crisped locks were like the raven never have i known the prophet's warning to the state to fail i know it too and it perplexes me to yield is grievous but the obstinate soul that fights with fate is smitten grievously son of many authors list to good advice what should i do advise me i will heed go free the maiden from her rocky cell and for the unburied outlaw build a tomb is that your counsel you would have me yield yea king this instant vengeance of the gods is swift to overtake the impenitent ah oh, what a wrench it is to sacrifice my heart's resolve but fate is ill to fight go trust not others do it quick thyself i go hot foot bestir ye one and all my henchmen get ye axes speed away to yonder eminence i too will go for all my resolution this way sways twas i that bound i too will set her free almost i am persuaded it is best to keep through life the law ordained of old exit creon 
thou by many names adored child of Zeus, the god of thunder of a theban bride the wonder fair italia's guardian lord in the deep embosomed glades of the eleusinian queen haunt of revelers men and maids dionysus thou art seen where ismenus rolls his waters where the dragon's teeth were sown where the bacchanals thy daughters round thee roam there thy home thebes o bacchus is thine own thee on the two crested rock lurid flaming torches see where corisian maidens flock thee the springs of castaly by nisa's bastion ivy clad by shores with clustered vineyards glad there to thee the hymn rings out and through our streets we thebans shout all hall to thee ivy ivy oh as thou lovest this city best of all to thee and to thy mother living stricken in our dire need we call thou seest with what the plague our townsfolk sicken thy ready help we crave whether adown parnassian heights descending or o'er the roaring straits thy swift was wending save us o oh save brightest of all the orbs that breathe forth light authentic son of Zeus, immortal king leader of all the voices of the night come and thy train of theods with thee bring thy maddened rout who dance before thee all night long and shout thy handmaids we evi evi enter messenger attend all ye who dwell beside the halls of cadmus and amphion no man's life as of one tenor would i praise or blame for fortune with a constant ebb and rise casts down and raises high and low alike and none can read a mortal's horoscope take creon he methought if any man was enviable he had saved this land of cadmus from our enemies and attained a monarch's powers and ruled the state supreme while a right noble issue crowned his bliss now all is gone and wasted for a life without life's joys i count a living death you'll tell me he has ample store of wealth the pomp and circumstance of kings but if these give no pleasure all the rest i count the shadow of a shade nor would i weigh his wealth and power against a dram of joy what fresh woes bringst thou to the royal house both dead and they who live deserve to die who is the slayer who the victim speak Haman, his blood shed by no stranger hand what mean he by his father's or his own his own in anger for his father's crime o oh, prophet what thou spakest comes to pass so stands the case now tis for you to act lo from the palace gates i see approaching creon's unhappy wife evridice comes she by chance or learning her son's fate enter eurydice ye men of thebes i overheard your talk as i passed out to offer up my prayer to pallas and was drawing back the bar to open wide the door upon my ears there broke a wail that told of household woe stricken with terror in my handmaid's arms i fell and fainted but repeat your tale to one not unacquaint with misery dear mistress i was there and will relate the perfect truth omitting not one word why should we gloze and flatter to be proved liars hereafter truth is ever best well in attendance on my liege your lord i crossed the plain to its utmost margin where the course of polynices gnawn and mauled was lying yet we offered first a prayer to pluto and the goddess of crossways with contrite hearts to deprecate their ire then laved with lustral waves the mangled corse laid it on fresh lopped branches lit a pyre and to his memory piled a mighty mound of mother earth then to the caverned rock the bridal chamber of the maid and death we sped about to enter but a guard heard from that godless shrine a far shrill wail and ran back to our lord to tell the news but as he nearer drew a hollow sound of lamentation to the king was born he groaned and uttered then this bitter plaint 
Am I a prophet? Miserable me! Is this the saddest path I ever trod? Tis my son's voice that calls me. On, press on, my henchman. Haste with double speed to the tomb where rocks down-torn have made a gap. Look in, and tell me if in truth I recognize the voice of Haman, or am heaven deceived. So at the bidding of our distraught lord we looked, and in the cavern's vaulted gloom I saw the maiden lying strangled there. A noose of linen twined about her neck, and hard beside her, clasping her cold form, her lover lay bewailing his dead bride, death-wedded, and his father's cruelty. When the king saw him, with a terrible groan he moved towards him, crying, O oh, my son, what hast thou done? What ailed thee? What mischance has reft thee of thy reason? O oh, come forth, come forth, my son, thy father supplicates. But the son glared at him with tiger eyes, spat in his face, and then, without a word, drew his two-hilted sword and smote, but missed his father flying backwards. Then the boy, wroth with himself, poor wretch, incontinent fell on his sword and drove it through his side home, but yet breathing, clasped in his lax arms the maid, her pallid cheek incarnadined with his expiring gasps. So there they lay, two corpses, one in death. His marriage rites are consummated in the halls of death. A witness that, of ills whate'er befall, mortals' unwisdom is the worst of all. Exit Eurydice. What makest thou of this? The queen has gone, without a word importing good or ill. I marvel too, but entertain good hope. Tis that she shrinks in public to lament her son's sad ending, and in privacy would with her maidens mourn a private loss. Trust me, she is discreet and will not err. I know not, but strained silence, so I deem, is no less ominous than excessive grief. Well, let us to the house, and solve our doubts whether the tumult of her heart conceals some fell design. It may be thou art right, unnatural silence signifies no good. Lo, the king himself appears, evidence he with him bears. Gainst himself, ah me, I quake, gainst a king such charge to make. But all must own, the guilt is his and his alone. Woe for sin of minds perverse, deadly fraught with mortal curse. Behold us, slain and slayers, all akin. Woe for my counsel dire conceived in sin. Alas, my son, life scarce begun, thou wast undone. The fault was mine, mine only, O oh, my son. Too late thou seemest to perceive the truth. By sorrow schooled, heavy the hand of God, thorny and rough the paths my feet have trod humbled my pride my pleasure turned to pain poor mortals how we labour all in vain enter second messenger sorrows are thine my lord and more to come one lying at thy feet another yet more grievous waits thee when thou comest home what woe is lacking to my tale of woes thy wife the mother of thy dead son here lie stricken by a fresh inflicted blow how bottomless the pit does claim me too o death what is this word he saith this woeful messenger say is it fit to slay anew a man already slain is death at work again stroke upon stroke first son then mother slain look for thyself she lies for all to view alas another added woe i see what more remains to crown my agony a minute past i clasped a lifeless son and now another victim death has won unhappy mother most unhappy son beside the altar on a keen-edged sword she fell and closed her eyes in night but erst she mourned for megarevs who nobly died long since then for her son with her last breath she cursed thee the slayer of her child i shudder with affright o oh, for a two-edged sword to slay outright a wretch like me made one with misery tis true that thou wert charged by the dead 
queen as author of both deaths hers and her sons in what wise was her self-destruction wrought hearing the loud lament above her son with her own hand she stabbed herself to the heart i am the guilty cause i did the deed thy murderer yea i guilty plead my henchmen lead me hence away away a cipher less than nothing no delay well said if in disaster aught is well his past endure demand the speedy's cure come fate a friend at need come with all speed come my best friend and speed my end away away let me not look upon another day this for the morrow to us our present needs that they whom it concerns must take in hand i join your prayer that echoes my desire o oh, pray not prayers are idle from the doom a fate for mortals refuge is there none away with me a worthless wretch who slew unwitting thee my son thy mother too whither to turn i know not every way leads but astray and on my head i feel the heavy weight of crushing fate of happiness the chiefest part is a wise heart and to defraud the gods in aught with perils fraught swelling words of high-flown might mightily the gods to smite chastisement for errors past wisdom brings to age at last end of part two end of antigone by sophocles translated by francis store